Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Pickled Unscripted. As always, I am Dracoya. Unfortunately, Matt will not be joining us today, but that just means we can get down to the real fun, right? Nah, I'm just kidding. Can't wait for him to be back. So today I'm going to be drinking um, an amazing Japanese beer. I have sworn to myself that I'm going to be sticking to wine because it's healthier than beer, at least for the next few months while I'm trying to be healthy and get fit. But then I saw this bad boy at my local Asian Mart, and I, I'm telling you, you guys have got to try it. It has like little bits of... Oh, it's just it's just good man the Japanese know how to do everything just freaking delicious it, it tastes a little bit like rice like a little bit like rice in there and it's a nice pale ale that just has this beautiful flavor to it and I love it so jumping into our video today um, Matt and I found a very interesting article that was talking about some notes and guidelines on the new Dungeon Master's Guide, and I would love to hear what you guys think about it. So in the new Dungeon Master's Guide, they have a passage in the new guide that states what DMs have always known is that DMs are allowed to make their own changes. Well, thanks, Watsy. Uh, appreciate you telling us the obvious. Um, Okay, but thanks for your permission? I don't know. It feels kind of weird. It also feels a little bit like a retcon, as if they've published all of these items so far, and then they were like, oh shit, well, people don't really like this part. People don't really like all the changes we've made. We should let them know they can make changes on their own if they want. Okay, thanks, Watsy. How about coming up with just a good game to begin with? But it's fine. So that's my personal opinion. Some of you guys might disagree. Maybe you guys like to feel like you have permission, in which case, hey, more power to you. Who am I to say no and get in the way of your happiness? So one thing that it does talk about very explicitly is it's talking about explored, the exploitation of rules and how a lot of players have been doing that. I go back to if the rules were written properly, players wouldn't have the ability to exploit them, but it's fine. So interfering with everyone else's fun isn't part of the game. What's the, uh, the DM guide apparently says this explicitly. It then, go, it then goes into a couple of different rules. The first one being rules aren't physics. The rules of the game are meant to provide a fun game experience, not to describe the laws of physics in the worlds of D&D, &D, let alone the real world. Don't let players argue that a bucket brigade of ordinary people can accelerate a spear to the light of speed by all using the ready action to pass the spear to the next person in line. So what Watsi is saying here is that you are allowed to have an elephant that can't lift a feather and you're allowed to have, you know, a simple little dwarf gnome character who apparently is built like an ant and can throw a boulder. It's totally allowed because the rules aren't physics. Rules don't matter. Welcome to the show. <laughs> See, I kind of disagree. I prefer a little bit of realism in my games personally. I really like it when reality meets fantasy in my world. I also have always played with the most amazing, smart people you've ever met. A lot of these people are engineers and doctors and lawyers. And so I love playing with these people because nobody knows how to argue how physics should work in a fantasy setting than these people. I remember one day very explicitly, my friend and I, we got out a whiteboard and a marker to demonstrate the mathematics of how we can do this one weird thing that we were trying to do. I don't think that the DM actually understood what we were trying to do, but after all of that effort, how could he say no? And you know, that is allowed. But I enjoy the realism in my games. That might be me. What do you guys think? So then, going into the game is not an economy. The game is not an economy. The rules of the game aren't intended to model a realistic economy and players who look for loopholes that let them generate infinite wealth using combinations of spells are exploiting the rules. Are they? Are they exploiting the rules? I mean, I, I feel like if the rules were written better, players wouldn't be able to exploit them. But again, maybe that's just me. 
Have you guys ever used something in your games where you created infinite wealth? What is it that you did? I would love to hear your stories. Personally, one of my games, one of my characters, we decided to um, get a giant amount of wine from a particular inn, and we somehow convinced this guy that every single bottle that we sold, we would get X amount of dollars back. We basically franchised imaginary Dungeons and Dragons wine all across this world, and we conned people into thinking it was good wine, and it wasn't. It was pretty bad. But we had a great time doing it, didn't we? And before we continue, I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about some amazing merchandise that Pickle Dragon and I have started. I am advertising one of them right here. We've got four of our characters on the t-shirt, and it says, when one of us gets attacked, we all roll for initiative. As some of you might know, there was a problem a while back with somebody that was getting bullied and it gave me a great idea of making t-shirts. If one of us gets attacked, we all roll for initiative because we're not going to stand for bullies. Not in our world. So, if you guys are interested, take a look at our merchandise. Take a look at that shop. I know Matt's coming out with some really great Christmas sweatshirts just for you guys. Moving on. Combat is for enemies. Some rules apply only during combat or while a character is acting in initiative order. Don't let players attack each other or helpless creatures to activate those rules. Well, on one hand, I, I can actually understand that. I don't feel like most DMs, at least not in my experience, have allowed players to attack each other without cause. In my experience, most DMs also have not allowed players to use skill checks against each other in order to manipulate or lie or, you know, do something along those lines. But sure, there are always exceptions to the rules. In one particular game that I was playing, there was a group where we had a split party on what to do. We had an NPC that new information about the kidnapping of one of our party members. We needed to get this information out of him. Otherwise, we were concerned this party member would die. So what did we do? Well, half of us wanted to torture the information out of him. The other half of us wanted to not torture the information out of him. So there was a split in the party. And we did actually have some combat to figure out who was going to win in that decision. And, you know, it worked out just fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't get to torture the lizard, but, you know, there's always next time. Have you guys ever been in a situation where you had to fight the rest of your party? How do you guys handle that kind of conflict? Do you just battle it out or do you tend to talk it out? Do your DMs actually allow you to make skill checks in order to manipulate the party? I'm interested to hear what your experiences are. Maybe they're very different than mine. And the last thing that Watsi has put on here is that rules rely on good faith interpretation. Okay, so the article states, this is a great reminder that you're playing the game with other people. Everyone at the table should have each other's backs. D&D &D is an adversarial by default, though it certainly can be played that way. And if you like the kind of game where players show up to broken, bad faith interpretations of the rules to try and mess with each other. If you like someone pointing out that a second level spell can ruin economics and also the game, and then doing exactly that, go wild. But the idea is that you're all in this together, even when the DMs and PCs are out to get you. And I have to say, I like that sentiment. I like it a lot because when one of us gets attacked, we all roll for initiative. And I have to say, most of the games that I have played, I've never had to worry about making too many death saving throws. I've never had to worry if my party had my back. My party has always had my back. And there is something quite inspiring and comforting about being with a good group of people that you know will always have your back. And I do think that that mentality can bleed over to your real life as well. Knowing that you have your tribe, knowing that you can stand up together and conquer anything both in and out of Dungeons and Dragons. So, what do you guys think? 
Do you have some opinions on some of the things that I've brought with, brought to you today? If so, let me know, comment, like, subscribe, and I'm sure Matt will be back to have another round on us.